I can't tell if my hair like this makes me look like a middle-aged person who works in an office or someone from Little House on the Prairie. I can't tell. Hi everybody. If you do not know me, my name is Paige and this is my little crochet account where I do a bunch of crochet things. And today's entire video is inspired by one comment I got on one TikTok like six months ago of them saying some them being the commenters saying something along the lines of, have you ever thought about doing tutorials for crochet? No, I, I saved the comments. I'm like, wow, I could do that. Um, Welcome to your crash course of an introduction to crochet. Now, I know they said tutorial and like how to do things or something like that. However, I feel really weird just hopping into here's the stitches and how to do them because I learned crochet in a really untraditional way. I taught myself with YouTube videos, which doesn't sound that untraditional until I tell you that for my first project, I used one ball of yarn. And just kept chaining until I learned tension. And then after that, I made my own pattern. That is literally how I learned crochet. And I don't mean like a simple pattern either. I pulled out with a whole freaking... At the time, Among Us was really popular. So I made my own like little Among Us character pattern. Because I didn't like any that the internet had. Like that is literally how I learned crochet. And looking back, I wish I someone would have told me about like the fundamental parts of crochet first so that's what we're talking about today when i say this is an introduction to crochet i mean more it's like a crash course introduction to crochet which i know i've already said i just wanted to say crash course again um <laughs> so before we hop right into it just a couple of quick little things to put out there one i'm not a professional um do i do this for a job yes do i have a whole lot of fun doing it yes um but am i someone who invented crochet and knows all of the techniques and everything no i'm still learning to this day about crochet and how it works but i've been crocheting for like three and a half years so i think i kind of know a little bit about like talking about the basics of crochet so i feel good enough to share my knowledge <laughs> with that being said i've never done a tutorial type of video before or anything even remotely close to sitting down and talking about crochet so i do apologize if it's like not your vibe because my vibe is kind of chaotic when i do my projects and i have a feeling that's gonna come here as well as i talk and just keep talking but to stop myself from going off on too many tangents i do have notes that we're gonna go through as i introduce you to the wonderful world of crochet so those are my disclaimers. That's an introduction to myself and a little bit about my crochet journey or the start of it. So let me introduce you to the the world of chaotic crochet. Gosh, <laughs> I feel like I need to start with like a definition or something like crochet is from the 1700s. I don't even know when crochet is from. Um, let's, let's start with talking about yarn and in the kindest way possible to not talk to you like you're stupid. If you've never seen yarn before, this is what yarn is. This is what it looks like. Isn't it cool? This is also yarn. This is also what it looks like. Isn't that so cool too? My point is that yarn can come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, all of the above, just like people. Um, but the things that the labels say are what's important to our conversation today. I'm going to use this yarn as an example, but literally every single label will tell you the same important parts about the yarn. You just got to find where the information is. So firstly, in addition to yarn coming in different like shapes, size, colors, all of that fancy stuff, it also comes in different like materials that it's made out of. The two that I work with most are acrylic and cotton, like acrylic yarn and cotton yarn, or sometimes a mix. If you're looking for what your yarn is made out of, it is right on your wonderful little label. This, for example, is 100% anti-pilling acrylic yarn. So the yarn's made from acrylic. Please don't ask me what acrylic is when I say I wasn't a professional. I literally mean I'm not a professional. All I know is that this is acrylic yarn. Based on the material that your yarn is made out of, it kind of determines what projects you can do with it. If you don't care about your projects falling apart, then please take what I say with a grain of salt. But as someone who has made projects with the incorrect yarn and then cried when their projects fall apart, fell apart, hi, yeah, that's me, I would recommend that you know what yarn you're working with. Every single person who I have talked to who crochets has a different opinion on what kind of yarn to use where, with the overall theme that cotton yarn should be used for things that you're exposing to heat, wet, moisture, anything like that. So coasters, washcloths, there's actually yarn that has like the little scrubby things to make those scrub things for dishes. You're gonna wanna use that specific yarn, right? Like it's a kind of a, like an important part. I don't know, what's a good anagram for that? What is it called? A metaphor? What is a good metaphor for that? You can't put, like, the ingredients of a vanilla cake into the oven and expect a chocolate one to come out, right? Like, it just, it doesn't work like that. That's a really bad metaphor. But my general rule of thumb with the projects that I do is that I will use acrylic for plushies, blankets, um, car charms. I make those little things that hang on the car mirror. I will use acrylic for that. And then cotton, I will use for washcloth, scrubs, anything like that. Other stuff I make is, like, hexagon cardigans, um 
book sleeves what else do i make bandanas for that i just kind of use the yarn that i have like for some projects i personally don't think that it matters too much but if you're curious on whether or not your stuff can go into the washing machine and stuff like that the label will also tell you that wonderful information this one for example is machine washable low iron no bleaching no tumble drying and dry flat with most yarns that you find it's going to say something along those lines it'll also have the fancy little picture diagrams of whether or not you can put it in the washing machine what temperature and all that fancy stuff that you will need to know if you need to wash your yarn as a finished project but moving on from that let's talk about yarn weight every single yarn that you have is going to have a weight and that weight is correspondent to a number on what i like to call the yarn weight scale does it actually have a name i don't know like i literally it's a hobby i haven't actually sat down at like a crochet class right like the terms that i use could be totally incorrect totally wrong but this is how i know it but for this yarn scale weight thingy mabob this one is a four which means it's like a medium weight yarn the scale goes from like one to eight or one to nine i believe with one being the smallest and eight being the largest um i've put a little diagram over here i'm sure it's still over there of smallest to biggest like what's the term i know it's bulky yarn fluffy i call it fluffy yarn I just like there's so many different types of yarn and each yarn will have the weight on it now depending on what project you're working on you're going to want a certain weight of yarn how do i know what weight of yarn that i want for my project great question there's a couple of ways you're going to want to know okay first off if you have a pattern and you found a pattern and you're going to use the pattern follow the pattern <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. I have taken patterns and used them incorrectly with the wrong types of yarns and then I get giant projects or I get projects that don't turn out proportion proportionately. Like if you're following a pattern, follow the pattern. The pattern maker knows what they're talking about, okay? I can say we. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> Unless advised otherwise that you can make it larger or smaller, I would recommend following the pattern's rules. But if not, you can also think about the size of the project that you want, you know? Like a blanket per se if you want a really large really fluffy blanket you're gonna want a bigger weight yarn if you want a really small really like thin detailed blanket you're gonna want like a thinner yarn right and relating to the weight of yarn you're also going to be able to find the hook size on here of what hook size you're going to want to use with your yarn for example my yarn here is a us 7 or a 4.5 millimeter hook i'm going to be so real with you when i say i don't know what us 7 means i'm a millimeter girly all my hooks are in millimeters or i use a conversion chart that i find on google for your viewing pleasure <laughs> the hook size that you use will coordinate directly to your yarn which will also coordinate to how big your project turns out and how big your stitches are my general rule of thumb is if i'm following a pattern i will follow the pattern with the hook size that they give me if i'm not following a pattern i will just go based off of the label that's my rule other people have different rules crocheting is really subjective that's what i found out when i wrote this down is that a lot of what i do is based off of my personal experience and that's okay it's a lot of trial and error crochet is a lot of trial and error okay final section about yarn lot numbers <laughs> again that information can be found right on the label the lot number is just the dye lot of your yarn which means your yarn has been dyed with these other skeins of yarn or balls of yarn, whatever the word you want to use. I use both interchangeably. The lot numbers are different. The colors will not be the same. I'm sure if you are watching this or if you've seen crochet literally anywhere, you've seen those videos of people going to Michael's Hobby Lobby Joe Manson being like trying to find the same lot color for this little tiny ball of yarn that they have left. That is the issue you will run into if you do not buy yarn from the same lot number because they are not the same. They do not correlate. It can be the same colorway, but every batch of the colorway is different. That is the most annoying part of crochet to me is that even if you buy the same color, the tint will be different or the shade will be just slightly different and different enough that you will be able to tell and people looking at your garments or your plushies will also be able to tell. So please, 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 I cannot stress this enough buy more yarn than you think you will actually need it's not a hoarding issue it's not it's you planning ahead for the well-being of your crochet project's future to sum up the yarn section everything you need is on the label the label is your best friend don't be afraid of the label i know it has a lot of words on it you got this you got this okay so that's yarn so then there's that one other really big part of crochet you know the hook. as i've mentioned before crochet hooks have different sizes that correlate to different 
weights of yarn. Um, but even more specific than that, there is a different way of knowing which hook size you're using, one for the US and one for the UK. Because of course there is, they couldn't make it easy. The US system uses letters and pretty much the smaller the letter, the smaller the hook size. So if you have a B hook, it's going to be a small hook. But if you have an H hook, it's going to be a bigger hook. I personally don't even know if those letters are used in crochet hooks because I use millimeters. I'm a UK girly when it comes to my hook sizes. More often than not, the patterns that you use will have millimeter terminology or have both millimeter and letter terminology because most crocheters use millimeters. Same thing with the letters goes for numbers. The smaller number you have, the smaller your hook is going to be. And the larger number you have, the larger your hook is going to be. But hallelujah, this is a great thing. Your hooks will tell you what size they are in either numbers or letters or both most of mine say both here's the great thing though if your crochet hook only tells you a letter or only tells you a number there's wonderful charts there's wonderful little charts that'll tell you if you know the corresponding number and letter here's one for you isn't it great i love it completely sidetracking from the whole looking at your hooks part it doesn't matter if you have just a metal hook or if you have one with a fancy dancy silicone whatever the heck handle i don't know what it's made out of they work the same i have both of them i'll use them interchangeably my favorite brand is clover they have the really nice handles and i just i love them and i think if you use the bigger handles it goes against you getting that repetitive drain motion whatever the thing I don't actually know. I'm not- I've never looked that up before. But if you're starting a project and you're like, what freaking hook do I use? Go buy the label of your yarn. I know I've already said it, but it's important. Go buy the label of your yarn. And if you don't go buy the label of the yarn, go buy the pattern. Pattern first, label second. That is my wonderful, wonderful little thing. I'm gonna throw you off for a curveball, even though I just said, go pattern, go label. Go tension. <laughs> Tension, tension, tension. Tension is so tedious and so stupid, but you gotta love her because she's nice. Tension is pretty much just how tight or how loose you hold your yarn on your hook and therefore how loose or how tight your stitches are. Um, this is going to change as you crochet. When I first started out, I used like a 3.75 millimeter hook for projects that took a 5 millimeter hook because my tension was super, super loose. For other people, when they're starting out, their tension is super, super tight. So instead of using a 5 millimeter hook, they would use a 7 millimeter hook. Pretty much, rule of thumb, if you have a really, really tight tension, you're going to use a larger hook. If you have really, really loose tension, you're going to use a smaller hook. Even better news, as you can continue to crochet and your hands start to understand the motions that they're doing, your tension is going to change. So from project to project, if you're looking like a, couple, like a month in between, you will notice that if you use the same kind of hook for the same project with the same yarn, your outcome still might be a little bit different. That's an issue I run into a lot as someone who creates plushies to sell on the internet is that I have to be like batch one, batch two, because even today my attention is still changing. But that's the wonderful world of hooks. They're really not as scary as they look. I promise they won't get you in the middle of the night. They're kind of sweet and they do help you with your projects. Moving on to the last part of the materials thing, let's talk about safety eyes and tapestry needles. To give you a really bad and a really obvious definition, safety eyes are the eyes that go into plushies, like crochet plushies. Those are called safety eyes. You can get them from literally anywhere online pretty much or any local craft store. I have found my best luck in buying safety eyes on Amazon. I'll get like a little tray of them with a whole bunch of different sizes that also comes with the backings that I need. That is something that is really important about safety eyes. They have both a front and a back and unfortunate for me i have bought safety eyes a couple of times where they didn't come with the backing um i don't know why but when you buy your safety eyes please make sure that you get both of the eye itself and then the fastener for the back when picking what eyes you want to put into your project you can go by the pattern i will go by the pattern most of the time but it's also personal preference like if you want your plushie to have bigger eyes you can give it bigger ones smaller you can give it smaller just keep in mind that the eye has to be a little bit bigger than the stitch otherwise the eye will fall out of your project i have had this happen to me multiple times. If you're struggling with your safety eyes, there's also a wonderful little trick that I learned recently. I've never actually done it, but I think that it works because I've seen other crocheters do it. You can take a little piece of felt and put it on the back of your safety eye inside your project and then put the fastener over that piece of felt and then voila, you have a little barrier to keep your eye in or I think that's like the idea behind it. I don't know, I've never actually done it before. And then the other thing is tapestry needles. They are just the wonderful little needles. They're the little needles that people use to sew things together. If you're using a larger weight yarn, you're going to want to use a needle that has a bigger eye. Um, but that's really the only thing to keep in mind is that 
bigger bigger yarn bigger hole you know now that we've wrapped up materials let's talk about one of my favorite sections which is the patterns first off where the heck do you find your patterns there's a lot of places where you can get patterns some of my personal favorite are instagram ravelry amazon etsy youtube people have crochet blogs and then i also use bracelet books to do my tapestry crochet which i love very dearly youtube is obviously more for video patterns and if that's your jam that's your jam i just found that after i learned how to crochet i didn't like sitting and watching people do it when i wanted to crochet something so i'm more of a written pattern girly and i'm totally okay with that it's totally up to you for my other girlies who enjoy written patterns please keep in mind the materials list It'll tell you what yarn weight they used and what hook size they used. Again, it's really important to keep your project the same size that theirs is. Of course, if you want a larger or smaller project, you can adjust your hook size and your weight or just your hook size or just your weight. For example, if your project has weight for yarn and hook size of 5.5 millimeters, if you want your project to be smaller, you can make the yarn weight 4 and your hook size weight 4. And if you want a larger project, you can make the weight a six and the hook size a seven. Honestly, to know exactly what you want, it's kind of trial and error, unfortunately, and you've got to kind of go into it knowing that if you get a bigger yarn, it's going to be bigger and it's going to be significantly bigger. I'm sure you've seen some videos of people crocheting and like, they're like, this was the pattern and this is what I got. Look at how big it is. They did it on purpose. They use super fluffy plush yarn and it just, it turns out beautiful too. It is really important to keep in mind though, that if you are using someone's pattern, that sometimes it does not translate well to larger projects. Most people will say if it doesn't, and if they don't, you gotta kind of find out for yourself, and it's not like a waste. It's just the proportions might be a little bit off, and that's okay. That's when I pull a, oh, it's meant to be like this style of crochet. <laughs> I've been sitting here too long, and my feet are falling asleep, so hold on while I shrink down to the ground. <laughs> and the final thing I'm going to introduce you to today is a wonderful thing that I like to call stitch abbreviations. Just like crochet hooks, crochet stitch abbreviations also have both US and UK terms. Every single pattern that I have used in my time as a crocheter, with the exception of one, has been a US pattern. Most patterns will tell you if it's US or UK terms, and if you don't know, you can always just look it up or message the pattern maker. They are more than welcome to answer your questions. Trust me, we love hearing from you. However, with that being said, it is also important to keep in mind that US and UK terms both use the same abbreviations just for different stitches. So if you're getting confused on why does my project look like this when theirs look like that, you might be using the wrong one. Don't let that intimidate you. I can guarantee you 98% of the patterns that you will see are US terms. Or maybe that's just because I live in America. I'm just not realizing if you're from the UK and you're watching this, this might, I don't know, it might be different. I have no idea. Wow. Remember when I said I wasn't a professional crocheter? It's really shining right now. Anyways, moving on from my crisis of UK versus US, let me introduce you to some of the basic stitch abbreviations. Don't worry, I'm giving you like 15. There's not going to be a quiz. We have single crochet, half double crochet, a double crochet, a triple or treble crochet, yarn over, slip stitch, chain, slip knot, magic loop or magic ring, back loop only, front loop only, increase and decrease. In my time as a crocheter, those 13 rules, regulations, what have you, have been the most important part about crochet. And don't worry, the longer that you crochet, the more that you will recognize those wonderful little abbreviations that you see. Now, if you're wondering how to do any of these stitches, I am going to make a video in the future talking about the stitches and how to do them and more about pattern reading and stuff like that. But like I said, this is a crash course of an introduction to crochet. <laughs> One other thing to talk about when it comes to stitch abbreviations, if you are using someone's pattern, they might use a different abbreviation for a stitch that you know a different abbreviation for. Um, some of them are inter interchangeable, so please make sure that you check the wonderful little stitch uh, stitch section, whatever, what is, it, what is it called? The abbreviation section of the pattern. Most pattern makers will put one because they know that they might use different terminology than what you're used to. Crochet is so beautiful. But sometimes it is such a pain in the... And then finally, we're going to touch very briefly on reading written patterns. If you look up on your screen, thank you, there are a couple of sample rows slash rounds, which I did not talk about. I will touch on that in a second, of what crochet patterns could look like. The first line is for single crochet. And in the parentheses, that is how many stitches you have at the end of a round. And then the one below that is two single crochet and two increases. Increases are when you add more stitches into one stitch to have more stitches 
in your pattern. That's a really bad explanation, pretty much. Because there's two increased stitches, you are adding two stitches to your pattern, which makes your old total of four final stitches go up to six final stitches. Based on what pattern you're reading, the parentheses might be switched for something else, and some people don't even include the parentheses of how many stitches are at the end of the round. It really just depends on what you're looking at. The final thing that I'm realizing I probably should have put in with the stitches abbreviation section is that there's something called rows and something called rounds. If you are working with something that is flat, like a blanket or a washcloth, something square, rectangle, something flat, right? <laughs> Those are going to be called rows. On rows, you crochet down one way and then you turn around and crochet the other way. The sister thing to that is called rounds. Rounds is typically found in amigurumi, which is a type of crochet, which is what plushies, hexagon cardigans, um, circles. That's that's what amigurumi is. It's like the 3D part of it in my brain. On rounds, you crochet around like a circle. For example, if you're using a circle, one round would be crocheting all the way around a circle. And then round two, you would crochet around it again. It's just pretty much how you differentiate from one part of the pattern to another. Super simple. That is all of my wonderful crochet knowledge I'm going to share with you today. If you clicked on this video and were ready to jump into a project and now you're like, wow, that's a lot of information. Oh my gosh, I don't know anything. Don't worry. Don't worry, I didn't know any of this either. And you don't need to know all of this. It's just kind of like things I wish I knew that I'm sharing with you. <laughs> like the little tidbit about how you don't want yarns from different lots or you don't want a really large hook with a really small weight of yarn. I wish I knew all of that. And now you do and you can be successful in your crochet adventures. And you may still have crochet failures even after watching this. So don't worry, that's fine. I still have crochet failures to this day. Do you want to see one? I'm currently working on a star pillow pattern and half of it looks great. But on the other half, I put the seam on the wrong side. Like, this happens to everyone. You're going to make mistakes while you crochet. And it's okay. They're still your little babies. Like, this is still my baby. <laughs> if you have any questions or have anything specifically that you would like me to teach you with my absolutely chaotic way of explaining crochet, please let me know. I'm going to be more than willing to introduce you even further to the world of... I was going to say bits and bobs, but that doesn't really make sense here. The world of hooks and hookers. I don't know. Now that I've indoctrinated you, you can officially call yourself a hooker. That is literally the definition of crochet. That's what it stems from, is being a hooker. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next week. Doodles!